unfiltered, uncensored, and unapologetic. This is the Retail War Zone Podcast. As you can see, we got a new look. What's everybody think? Is, does it look okay? Did you like the fire in the intros? I was kind of happy with that. You know, I like fire. It's nice. And then I think it looked good. Yeah. Oh, are you are you actually seeing it, Irish? Yeah, I can see it on the on the TV. You see the fanciness behind me right now. I do. Look, yeah. look at look at that boy. See what happens in thirty days. <laughs> oh, and look, there's even more new stuff. So. You know, this is kind of like a, a knocking the rust off kind of night, so to speak, and uh, making sure everything's up and running. But, hey, look, if you're watching us on YouTube and you have not subscribed, check it out. Look, see a little button? Yeah, you hit that button, and then you hit the other little button. Um, and I can't hear it on my end. Did that make noise when it came up? I'm just curious. I think it makes like some little ding or some shit. Uh, Hybrid says, "Tis the season to set things on fire for warmth." Hero says, "Yes." And, yeah, oh, was it was it very loud, or was it like a decent volume? So I can adjust it for the future. Oh this, no, it was like perfect. Oh, fantastic, fan fucking tastic. This is great. All right, so, um, yeah, so I made some changes, um to the look obviously uh i felt like it was time for a little bit of a facelift uh, there's some other stuff i'm going to be working on and in, in, in the future let me know if the stream lags i know hero and i were talking about it and she was concerned with like the full motion video behind me that it may cause some problems but i've got a thing on the bottom of my screen where i can see if we drop frames and everything looks to be going good so it's cool um so took a break October came and went. Um, things that have happened. About damn near chopped my thumb off at work. And uh that that wasn't that wasn't fun at all. I have a history of cutting myself and not knowing it. Um I I did shave hybrid, but because of the lighting, it's not as uh, it's still there. It's just a little low. But look how long my damn hair's got. It's crazy. Um, so I almost chopped my thumb off with a box cutter uh, just for shits and giggles so you can understand how deep it was. This is the box cutter in question. That's how deep it was. You see that? So I about down there cut the top off, and the I cut literally right across the top of the nail. So I couldn't get stitches, even if I wanted to. It's not like they're going to rip the nail off and, and sew you up in the nail bed. And uh, so um, long story short, at three o'clock, it kept me up to 3 o'clock in the morning at night. I finally got it to stop bleeding enough to put liquid bandage on it. And ladies and gentlemen, I did not know how much that burnt. Oh, my God, I thought I was going to die. It was bad enough that it was hurting. I put that shit on. I'm like, I just poured fire. I'm like, that sucked. Um, yes. Also... Um, Mad Dog got a house. Uh, Mad Dog is in a different state. She left South Carolina. So congrats on that, Mad Dog. Um, what else happened in October? Oh, that's right. Um, our anniversary is Halloween, and my wife and I decided to share COVID. So that was fantastic. Uh, it was not nearly as bad as last time. That's great. I've got a little bit of a cough and congestion that I don't like right now, but... Um, I'm back at work, <laughs> you know, I'm doing my thing. So other things that happened, um, let's see, the serving times hit its year anniversary here recently. So I know Blame Tag is going to be with us Friday, and I know he's working this evening. He'll probably pop in, but that's a pretty momentous thing. One year of the serving times, congrats. I keep talking to him about um, the serving times being our quote-unquote sponsor. I think that would be cool. <laughs> He hasn't given me any answer on that yet. I think he's scared. I don't know. Um, see, uh, this this really rich guy took over Twitter, and everybody's mad as fuck, and I don't understand why, because, you know what? Social media, do, do we remember MySpace? They come and they go. It'll be okay. I promise. Um, Hero posted also in October, an ancient evil awakened. 
Mariah Carey came out. We came out swinging. Uh, please spread the song. I hope everybody enjoyed the little video I did. Uh, I know <laughs> when I originally sent it to Blame Tag, he 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 told me that it was going to give him nightmares because I did a really good job of making the little kid and the video look really really creepy, and you know altering the first notes of All I Want for Christmas Is You. So that was fun. Um, let's see. Uh, if you're into football, you know, Clemson lost their first game. Everybody here in South Carolina is losing their mind. Whatever. We, we keep moving. Um, and that's about it. Irish, how, how was your October? Not nearly as eventful as yours, <laughs> uh, evidently. Um, I did not get COVID. Uh, instead, I got an audit from, uh, from a just, you know, uh, in my workplace. And that was a whole heap of no fun. Um, so as anyone familiar with audits would know, you spend the, uh, most of the, uh, notice period <laughs> frantically cleaning up all the shit you were supposed to be doing all along. So that was today. I'm exhausted after a significantly longer week than I'm used to these days. Um, uh, other than that, it's been the same kind of shit in October as every other month. Uh, so no, nowhere near as eventful as yours. Well, and Hero just posted, I made the mistake of, of letting her sucker me going into Ryan, I mean Ryan's, Michael's today. Um, I wanted Chinese food on date day, and I haven't had Chinese food in a long time, and she doesn't like Chinese food. So I guess turn around, I, you know, we'll, we'll go to Michael's, and then I bought her a pop figure. But anyway, we walk in to Michael's, and we're immediately assaulted with Christmas. And I, all of a sudden, I listen. And, and, and she made a comment. She's like, we've only been here three minutes, and I'm hearing Christmas music. And I'm like, I got to go. I got to leave. I, I, I can't do this. It's, it, no, I can't. <laughs> so, I mean, it was horrible. And I'm like, oh, no. Because, you know, the craft business ruined Christmas for me. So, But she enjoyed it, so good for her. Good for her. So I, I can't, you know, if it makes her happy, that's fine. And then we went to a comic book store locally that relocated – that is now in a much bigger place, which is cool. And I uh, found some pop from was it is it Sword and Stone? What 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 Disney cartoon is it? Hero from the the dragon. Anyway, oh, Hybrid says I've been making the punk company pay for my sushi all week. When you coming back to Greenville? Because I know it's going to happen, Hybrid. Ever since Mad Dog left, you know. Oh, the Sword and the Stone. Okay, there you go. So, but yeah, that's, that's kind of what's going on. So let's talk a little bit about the world. Let's talk about, um, we're not talking about politics cause it sucks and I'm sick of hearing about it. But anyway, um, retail. So quite a few little things have happened while we've been away. I know the topics that we're going to cover Friday, I'm not really going to get into that tonight because Blame Tag and I kind of agreed that was going to be our thing. Um, like I said, we were going to do it last week, but, you know, COVID had other plans. And lots of things going on. Um, let's talk a little bit about the inflation. And then this would be good, Irish, because you and I can kind of um, bounce what we got going on here versus over there. Thanks, Russell. Um, so there was an article that came out. Um, on common dreams that I posted on Twitter. And this is something I had referenced long before I took the break, that there was a study and an investigation going into inflation and pricing tactics. And this is what happened. So house analysis confirms corporations use cover of inflation to raise prices excessively. Notice I got the Monopoly man down there. It makes perfect sense, right? Um, it says a report <coughs> released Friday by a panel of the U.S. House Committee on Oversight and Reform highlighted how certain corporations are using the cover of inflation to raise prices excessively, resulting in record profits and profit margins at the expense of consumers. According to the subcommittee, three of the five largest companies in the shipping industry saw profits rise by 29,965%. The two largest public companies in the rental car industry enjoyed a profit increase of 597%. Four of the largest public companies in the meat processing industry saw profits go up by 134%. 
and four of the 10 largest public companies by market cap in the oil and gas industry had profits rise by 62%. So over the same period, profit margins increased by 201% among the companies analyzed in the shipping industry, 262% among the companies analyzed in the rental car industry, and by 53% among the companies analyzed in the meat processing industry. Um, It also states that recent economic studies make clear that record corporate markups, profits, and profit margins contributed to and continue to contribute to ongoing inflation. Uh, the big thing that I'm, – I'm not one for, like, big government, okay? I, I, too much government is always bad. But the document concludes with the assertion that the federal government can and should play an important role in addressing inflation, including by passing legislation to address excessive price hikes. Now, this is crazy, all right? And we kind of all knew this was going on. And if you explain it in pretty simple terms, we'll just use basic math, okay? You know, let's say a product cost five dollars to manufacture and and that's your overall cost that factors in everything for you and you're selling it for 10 so you're making five bucks on it all right so all of a sudden you raise the price and you say that okay we've got to pass that increase of cost on to the customers well the profit margin there has to be a parity between the original cost in the new cost, which means if they're making $5 per item, when they raise the price, they should still be making $5 per item. But that's not what's going on. And, you know, they're saying, okay, we're ch- we've are we charged 10 for a product that cost us 5 Now we're going to charge you 15 for a product that costs us 7 and that's and that's the thing. If you look at the overall structure and you look at the overall financial side of it, there has to be a parity between profit margins as these prices go up. But what we're seeing is these industries, their profit margins are doubling and tripling, which means they're gouging everybody. And that's where there has to be some sort of oversight um, to to put the brakes on that. What's up, blame tag? Have fun with your family. That's going to mess up your store. Um, Good to see you. Looking forward to Friday. So that's kind of what we're dealing with. And, And really, it's all across the board. You go into any stores, and people are mad, but nobody's really doing anything about it except bitching. And these companies are just doing it. You know, this grocery store sees that grocery store raise the prices, and they're like, oh, we're going to do it because they did it. And it's just a runaway freight train right now with no oversight whatsoever. So if you guys can give me examples in the chat of things that you know, say six to eight months ago were extremely cheap and what they are now. And then Iris, you know, tell us a little bit about what you got going on your side, because it's not just the United States things. I know what's happening there. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 similar. Um, we have, um, like, inflation is in double digits every month here for the last, you know, 10 months um, or thereabouts. Uh, uh, and some of it is what you, what you just described there. Like, it's just, it's essentially opportunistic, you know, predatory behavior by, 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 uh, by corporations. Uh, and a lot of it is suppliers too. Like, you know, suppliers are also, if there's a shortage on something, they're also gouging the, 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 the grocery stores. Um, but, uh, but here's the thing. Um, if we were to go back to the beginning of, uh, COVID, for example, there was a massive shortage of, let's say hand sanitizer. If you remember that, yes. like that, that, that was a real, shock to the to the market going okay shit there's all of a sudden a real shortage or something that's a crisis right now what we have now it's it's not necessarily a shortage we still have all the goods mostly uh that we had before um uh, but the the prices have just gone in, insane so i mean if over here it's predominantly you'll see it in the energy sector now it's largely because of the way the ireland is set up we we basically import nearly all of our energy. Um, so they, they're calling it an energy crisis. Well, it's it's not an energy crisis because if it was an energy crisis, the energy companies would be broke. They're not. They're in record profits, every fucking yep. one of them. So like, uh, or if they were breaking even, I could buy that story. But like, they're all in record profits. So they're not suffering at all. 
Um, and of course, that gets reflected uh, in the price on, on, on shelves and grocery stores and everything because you have to transport everything. Um, and some things have gone insane. Um, you know, uh, dairy has gone up a, an awful lot here. Uh, I actually expected uh, bread to go up a lot more because of the wheat and uh, and how much of it is produced in Ukraine, but it hasn't really. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 uh, it, 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 so much of it is just price gouging, opportunistic theft from you know exploitative bloody corporations. Um, and I don't, I think very little of it is actually reflective of the increase in costs um, uh, initially, at least. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's cool that you're talking about energy because hybrid. I don't know if you saw in the chat. He says, "Have you seen inflation with energy bills over there yet?" And and Iris and I were talking oh, about that Jesus, yeah. Yeah, before we went live. And and I will say, like, we're electric where I live, so the power bill has kind of maintained. It's not like jacked up. I, I, there's not been a huge spike from month to month that I've been like, "Oh, well, that's crazy." But as far as, you know, talking to Irish, you know, like their heating's oil. And so how often, okay, do you have to fill like a tank to last you through the winter? Explain yeah, how that, that works there. Yeah, essentially, uh, uh, you know, a, a significant amount of Irish uh, houses would have a um, an oil tank uh, attached to them. And you fill it, um, you know, about once a season, you know, if you were to do it all year round, but obviously in the winter it would be used the most. Um, uh, but like that has doubled a little bit more than doubled, um, and it was already expensive. Um, uh, electricity's got that's the worst. Uh, the electric bills are just insane. They they've just doubled because look, there, there's shit you can do for oil, like what I'm doing now. You just wear extra clothing. That's easy. There's only so many appliances I can turn off, you know. I mean, it's not like I was, you know, using the electric to uh, heat the house or anything like that. You know, I mean, it's just, you know, it's a couple of lights, a TV and a phone charger. You know, <laughs> it's we're not yeah. exactly, you know, and obviously we cook uh, using electric as well. So, you know, it's um, it's not stuff that's easily avoidable and it's double. Now, it's it's so bad that the government here inter- intervened in the same way that you guys did in uh, during COVID in a kind of a stimulus check. Like they, they, they gave uh, everyone uh, you know, a certain amount off their electric bill, like uh, 200 euro, which is essentially 200 dollars at this point, um, you, you know, to get them uh, to get them over the next the winter, essentially. And that, that there's going to be more of that coming but again it's uh jesus i mean like the the electric companies though are are rolling in money so i, I don't really see the, where the, their crisis is exactly now if you do not mind have sure. you have you filled your oil for the winter yet no i'm just, we're just straight up not going to but if i did it would be 800 dollars. 800 us dollars yeah well i think we're on power now really us and euro so versus how much would it have cost you last year Half that. So 400. Yep. Oh boy. Now, as far as your electric, that, that is interesting to me that that's went up as high. Now in your media over there, are they trying to play off like the war in Ukraine has, has anything to do with it? Well, I mean, it does to be fair. Uh, you know, we, we import now we never imported, uh, you know, our energy from Russia, but we imported it from places that did. So they obviously, since uh, the, the whole issue over there with uh, Russia being cut off, um, other places are using up their own supply. So, we, we, you know, we're, we're just, we have to play with it, with a reduced supply. And obviously, as everyone knows, if something is in high demand and it's a low supply, price goes up, like it's not that difficult to understand. Um, but it's just that there's very little you could, I mean, you, like for instance, in my two stores, yeah, I have to keep them open. I have to keep the lights on. You know, there's there's only so much you can do to reduce power usage. You know, <laughs> now um, do you do most Irish homes have like central air? No, none. Oh, I'd be very surprised. Uh, to, to, so, see, so we, our climate just doesn't need it, really. So you don't have an actual like air condition? No, uh, I I I mean, I might have been in a handful of homes in Ireland that do. So, what's the average temperature like during the summer? Oh man, in Fahrenheit, Christ, I don't know. Uh, but I mean, is it tolerable? Because you know, oh wrote- yeah, it's it's very mild. It's um, our our climate would be the most similar to say something like Washington State, Oregon, that kind of thing. Oh, uh, so, so it would be that that's where our climate is. We don't get extreme 
he we get a lot of rain essentially we we don't get like six feet of snow we get a couple, bit of frost you know every now and again um and in terms of summer in like the hottest it got this year was 30 which i think is 90 something in fahrenheit you know mm. so it, it doesn't get all that hot um hybrid brings up and we had talked about this before we went live hybrid uh said wonder what the solar panel walls are out their way i mean they're just regular like anything else you did they're just they're damn expensive though that's the only thing there, there there's various grants and incentives to um that like they, they want you to uh get put solar panels on your property um the, but there's a couple of issues with that there's only so many suppliers that are are say certified to do that because you have to do it correctly and the other thing too is you kind of helps to be rich first um because in order to qualify for a grant you have to pay up front and then ask for a rebate essentially well i don't have 10 grand in my back pocket to do that <laughs> right you know so i mean this is why you see like the the first people to go like all oh, get smug about being green are the are, are the rich people like i i also don't want to be burning power that's three times more expensive than yours thank you very much but you know right uh, but solar panels, yeah, we're in favor of solar panels, but it's it, there. There's a supply issue there, and it'll take it's a long list, uh, a waiting list to get them done. Yeah, uh, Russell, I see that you posted about diesel. Uh, there's a lot of fear porn out there about diesel. The reality is that we're not out of diesel, and we're not going to run out of diesel in 25 days. Yes, our reserve <laughs> is low. OK, and there are going to be some states where diesel prices go up extremely high. But like the video I watched, high prices cure high prices because what happens is as the prices go up, people buy less. The reserves build back up because people are buying less and it gives you some parity to where you were. I did see that the. This is the lowest reserve we've had since 19, I believe it was either 51 or 52. So it, it, it is bad, but the world's not going to shut down uh, as much as the people that have picked up on that. It will be a challenge. Um, the way it was explained was, you know, diesel moves the world. Okay. Electric doesn't, the guy was like, electric doesn't move anything. And then gas, you know, regular, you know, gas doesn't do a whole lot you know when you look at the amount of travel that these different items you know they may get shipped to a country to get assembled then they may get shipped to another country for the packaging then they may get shipped to another country for final distribution well when you've got products going that many places yeah the diesel's gonna gonna it hits you hard but from what i understand the pricing is kind of what they're hoping brings it back to where it was. And then in, in that, uh, in 51 or 52, you know, we're sitting at like, I think it was 25 days of reserve currently now. Back then, even though it was low, it was still like 100 days. So it, it, it is something to watch, but it's not the way some people are spinning it. It's not like, oh, there's not going to be any diesel in 25 days. That's not what that means at all. There's plenty of diesel, but we're using more than what we normally do. And a lot of it has to do with the pandemic and where everything backed up and whatnot. So, I mean, it's something to keep an eye on, but it's not going to be um, as scary as people think it is. The scarier thing is the ongoing argument about the railroad strikes which the government stepped in once more and they're trying their best to keep that from happening throughout the end of the year because hey look right now i don't give a fuck who you vote for i don't know i don't care all right but the reality is we're in q4 all right and profits are more important than people and every government agency is going to do whatever they can to make sure little Johnny's Christmas doesn't get canceled because these companies that, you know, are owned by Wall Street, they've got to hit those Q4 numbers. So diesel will be a problem first quarter of next year. I promise you it won't be a problem Christmas because 
this is this is where they make their profit. And and Christmas should be terrifying for everybody because if they're price gouging like they are right now on just regular basic goods, can you imagine Christmas? Holy God. I mean, Irish, do you, you guys do you guys do Black Friday over there? Uh, it's kind of a U.S. import. I mean, it, it, it it's there in, in mostly in electronic stores, and and they they do try and push it pretty hard, but it's it's bordering on cringe, to be honest with you. Like it's, uh, yeah, it's it's not like it is, and it, it, they they just and it's a race to the bottom. Actually, they, they they all start just cutting each other's prices. It's kind of and it's only on select items. You you, you know they make this big hullabaloo, and you go to a store, and there's like seven things on fucking sale. You know it's. Yeah, it's not it's not well, great, but it here, does exist. Here in the States, I mean, it's it was obvious. Like, as soon as Halloween was over, like, the next day, you had Walmart with Black Friday starts now. All these companies are running ads because they're obviously a little scared. I mean, and, and that's the thing about inflation that, you know, people go out to make sacrifices. I mean, you know, my kids aren't little anymore. And, you know, when you have little kids, it's toys, all right? And, and toys can ramp up in price a lot real fast, okay? So you're going to have families out there with young children who are going to have to start, you know, planning out what they're going to get their kids. And I just see these companies like with dollar signs in their eyes, knowing we can jack the prices up because little Johnny and little Susie have to have a good Christmas. And if that happens, man, that's just fucking dirty. Yeah. It's probably more than likely it's happening in some faceless corporate office office too. Like, you know, it's, yeah. And, and it's, it's going to be the poor guy or, you know, girls standing behind a counter that's going to get it in the face when when uh prices go up to uh, an insane level um but yeah unfortunately there, there's there's this is a great opportunity if if you're uh a boarding on a sociopath to uh, exploit people um in this environment because you know they call it you know i mean inflation is not equal i mean you know i i guarantee you you're all of us listening to this, the, your wages have not matched inflation. Oh, you fuck know? no, and they never will. Exactly. So, um, and, and and so, like, it's just, it's an opportunistic thing uh, for some of it. Some of it's legit, you know? Some of it, like, inflation is more or less natural, uh, you know? But um, n- not the crazy fluctuations that you can see in some places. Though. Well, I will say, and, and I'm not going to reveal names or sources, I will say that there's a company out there right now that bought a year's worth of merchandise at pre-inflation rates because they were smart to make sure they cruise through the holidays and be able to brag that they didn't have to raise their prices. One of the most genius things I've ever, I've ever heard. It caused a lot of problems with warehouses being full and things like that, but they can come out being like the hero during Christmas. Because they're not going to be able, they're not going to have to raise prices, because they bought everything at original cost. And um, when I heard that, I'm like, "Wow, y'all well, really have people sitting in the office to to predict this shit and decide, hey, we're going to pull the trigger now? That's insane." Well, in, in terms of retail, I just want to I want to point something out here. Uh, you, you've all heard for years about um, how uh, raising wages causes inflation. Well, guess what? You didn't fucking raise the wage, and right. inflation happened anyway. So there you go. Science has proved it. Wages and inflation, not much of a relationship there. Uh, so, I mean, you, you know, the wages did not cause this. So where's your argument now? So, you know, because it wasn't wages that caused this, it was something else. So, you know, so th- there's just another little nugget we can take with us for, for an argument some other day. You know, when, when someone raises that point again, is that, you know, like, you know, there was double digit inflation for the last 10 months, at least here, you know, and it was certainly not because of wages. Um, real quick, I want to acknowledge a comment that Hero just made. Um, she said, not to change the subject, but I have a question. Do you see what's continuing to happen in the workforce as the great resignation or the great re- renegotiation? That's Friday. We 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 we're armed for bear on Friday, so all your questions will be answered there. Yes, um, so I just want to throw that out there. So Blaine Tag and I, 
this is something we decided on a, on a while back. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, trust me, that one's going to be full of piss and vinegar. That, that's going to be bad. I might yeah, that's going to be a good one. Yeah. We might get kicked off of YouTube after that one. I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh, she said she was asking you, Irish, have you seen that there? Like instead of great resignation, it's now the great renegotiation. Ooh. <laughs> I don't want to steal any thunder uh, off you, your, your, yourself and blame tag. I'll be, I'll, I'll answer in the chat that night. I don't want to steal any thunder. Team player, that's what's up. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I, I see a lot of talking about buy now, pay later. Um, yeah, that's probably going to be the thing this year. Mm-hmm. I actually saw a post not even an hour and a half ago before I even started talking about like a firm and stuff like that. Now look. Let me, let me, full disclosure. Also, during my break, I got new gear, all right? So I play guitar and blah, blah, blah. But I go through a company called Zounds. I've been buying gear from them for years. And, you know, even at making great money, all right? You could be making, like, great money. You know, if you look and you're like, I really want that guitar. And that guitar is like $600. You can't just drop $600 right then. Well, this company does this thing where you you can get four payments, equal payments, anything over $249. No credit check, right? And what they do is they charge you in equal payments. It's kind of like QVC for musicians. But their prices aren't jacked up. Their prices are exactly what they are all across the industry. The fee that you pay is like... I mean, it, I've never seen it be more than like $14. That, that That's it, right? And you're talking on like high-ticket merchandise. And what they do is they just automatically deduct your debit card however many times. I've bought so much shit from this place that I get 12 months of payments, no credit check for anything over $350, all right? So I don't know how a firm and them work. I don't know if there's like interest rates involved or whatnot, but buy now, pay later, I think is going to become the norm because the company that I use to buy music gear through has been doing this for like a decade. So obviously it's profitable. Obviously their people are paying and they're not losing money. So I, I think the buy now, pay later is the new layaway. Can we agree? Yeah, I, 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 there's um, that's coming. That's here in kind of bigger ticket items here. Um, you know, uh, uh, furniture, electronics. I, 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 I can see that. Yeah, because uh, see, see, that's the thing. Like, like heroes talking about, like you pay for the item three times over. You see, where I get the merchandise from, the fee's a one-time fee when you when you pay. All right, so let's say the item's three hundred and fifty dollars. All right, so for the service to be able to do this. You pay three hundred and sixty. All right, that's it. You know, an extra ten dollars. And the cool thing is, once you make the very first payment, they send you the gear. It's called pay as you play. So you make one payment, and they send you the merchandise. Now, companies like a firm and whatnot, I, I gather that there's an interest rate involved. Can anybody confirm or deny that? Because I think there is. <coughs> But um, it, it, it is, I think that's something to watch for, that there are going to be companies come out with this and promote it during the holidays. And maybe not as much this year, but I think going forward as the economy continues to struggle, we're going to see that, and it's going to give people hope, and they're going to sign up for this stuff. And like Hero saying, they're going to wind up paying a ton of money. It's basically like these rent-to-own places. Irish, do you guys have rent-to-own places there? <laughs> Um. Yeah, yes, uh, but it'd be on kind of specific, uh, like, um, items. Like, so it would be big ticket items, really. Uh, like, you know, you're talking about, like, you know, the furniture is the uh, high electronics. Um. So yes, yeah, we do. Yeah. Because like here we have like places called like Rent a Center and Errands, and like I'll, I'll give you an idea. You could go and be like, hey, I want to rent to own an Xbox. And that Xbox costs two ninety nine, but by the time you get done paying it off, it's thirteen hundred dollars. 
Yeah, we don't uh, we don't have it on, on, on items like that. But I, what I'll say is it, it it's becoming more common now to just kind of be in debt and have nice things. Like for for example, like twenty years ago, it, like the, the higher purchasing a car was just not really heard of. Um, but like now, it's a, I I'd say the majority of uh, new cars are are all uh, higher purchase or some sort of other finance arrangements, you know, uh, so it's, it's, it's creeping in. Um, I mean, it, to be fair, it was there in the eighties as well, though. Like, you know, people used to rent color TVs, you know, but, um, I don't know if it's a, it's, it's, I don't think that's a fair, you know, comparison, but, uh, it's not good though. Uh, it's just, it's just, you know, here, you know, the, you know, have a load of uh, debt. That's what you're really buying. You're buying yeah. debt. I mean, no. when when you look at the markups on stuff like that, I mean, you got an Xbox that's three hundred dollars, and when you're done paying for it, you're yeah. signing up, and it, and it shows you in the terms when you sign. Oh, you're paying thirteen hundred dollars for if you're mm-mm, no. And yeah, you know, it's an instant <laughs> gratification thing, though. You know, right. people, say, I really want an Xbox, and I only have fifty fucking dollars. Oh, we'll take your fifty dollars here, have the Xbox, and we'll come after you for the next six years for the other thirteen hundred. You know, right? <laughs> um, it's, it, uh, you know. Ugh. Russell has a good point. He's like, you know, I thought about it. When layaway was available, there was less store credit cards involved. That maybe that's why layaway went away is, you know, layaway is and Kmart was a huge company who did layaway. And, you know, people relied on that because it was like, okay, because there was no like interest rate there was a small fee it's like three to five dollars or whatnot extra but you're able to there are so many families that, and myself included when you know my firstborn you know we finance christmas through layaway you know it's like okay we put this stuff on layaway we put a down payment down and we've only got to pay like ten dollars a month or, or whatever it is until you pay it off and it, and you weren't getting price gouged okay you were there weren't fees that were like bleeding you dry but russell brings up a good point everybody's got away from layaway and moved towards store credit cards yeah that would i, I that would suit the companies as well because you take the shit away there's no they don't have to pay for storage um or layaways you did um and it's 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 a hassle as you know it's trying to, to manage layaways because you know <laughs> there's always the risk of losing something damaging something and all that sort Look, of stuff the, the most the, the closest i ever came to being a karen was my oldest son i put the legend of zelda ocarina of time for the nintendo 64 on layaway for him for christmas right and we go to pick it up and they lost it now, mind you, this was an extremely sought-after game, and I lost my mind because I looked at it like I had made all the payments. I basically I paid for it. I I paid for something, and it's gone. Yeah, but but just just to let you know, they produced that cartridge while I was there. <laughs> there was no getting funny out, that. But, yeah, but um, you know, it, it's it. But, like, for clothing and things like that, I mean, layaway was a good process. And, Russell, you bring up a really good point. Did layaway get done away with for corporate credit cards? I, that That's something I've never thought about, and I, I think that's probably right because Walmart used to do layaway, right? I'm pretty sure Walmart did layaway. So what companies used to do layaway that don't do it now and now pushing credit cards. I think there is a correlation there because they're able to make more money on credit cards than, you know, just lay away. Um, Oh, that's the other thing. Hero said, Walmart too. Think of how there used to be stories about people paying off layaways for strangers to Christmas. Now, Iris, this is something I never told you about. When I was at Kmart, they had this thing. They were Christmas angels, right? And they would target Kmart because they knew Kmart had layaway. They would come like people would come in and randomly pay off just random layaways for people at Christmas. That was like their their good deed. They would just come in and they'd be like, "Here, you know." Some of them be like, "What's the highest layaway balance you got?" And they would pay it. Um, <laughs> and it, it was a really big deal there for a while. And and Kmart got some publicity out of it because at the time Kmart was the only one who was really doing layaway. And that was something that really, really happened that, I mean, people I like were getting, that. getting layaways paid off 
uh, people coming in who had extra money or just wanted to feel like they did something good for somebody, they would come in and start paying off these layaways for Christmas. And I, I mean, I witnessed moms coming in, you know, single moms that, that get like two kids and the dad's gone or whatnot and, and just break down in tears and cry because they, they, some of these layaways, Irish, they only just like recently put them on. And, and they were keeping their fingers crossed they were going to be able to get it done before Christmas. I mean, there were people who had six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollar layaways just wiped out by some some stranger. That's amazing. You ever have anything like that over there? No, not like that. Um, <clears throat> we, we, we have a... We have a lot of uh, of, of giving uh, to charity, especially on Christmas time. But it's it's usually given to a charity who then go on to do something like you described, but like not as direct as that. That's uh, that's actually quite nice. I quite like that. It, it's a nice reflection on the community there. Yeah. Um, Hybrid talks about Burlington doing layaway. By the way, Mad Dog, we realized today that the Burlington on Lawrence Road finally closed down. We're like, whoop, Burlington's gone. I don't know when that happened. Had to be quite recent. So, but yeah, I mean, it's how many of you feel like you're going to struggle for Christmas? I mean, you know, I got to start thinking about it. You know, I got to start thinking about, you know, I got teenage boys now. And I don't know what the hell I'm going to do, but you know, Christmas and inflation and high grocery prices, you know, all this shit comes at a very bad time of year now i will say from a grocery standpoint if you have the ability to store a turkey or store your goods for thanksgiving i'm just saying this now get it now the longer you wait the matter you're going to be if you want cranberry sauce go buy it tomorrow don't wait because you're not going to get it. Yeah, I already got mine. Well, I got my turkey. Well, yeah, you told me you got your turkey. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, there's also a, there's a bird flu that's rampant here that they're culling all the uh, livestock left and right, so that's not good either. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just it's one of those things that happens every couple of years where there's something that they have to... Like, we have a lot of regulations here about, like, making sure that, uh, you know, we control that sort of stuff. So it doesn't look like it's going to get to a, a widespread culling, but there's already a couple of uh, places in the country where they had to <laughs> cull the birds and it hasn't hit a turkey farm yet. But if it does, it's, it's fuck, you know? Wow. Uh, well, I mean, it's going to be an, it's going to be an interesting, weird end of the year. Um, one thing I do plan on doing is obviously we'll cover black Friday like we did last year. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I don't think black Friday is going to be a big deal anymore. I think Black Friday's dead, to be honest with you. I think that the month of November is basically Black Friday. And <clears throat> I just don't see these companies going back to that. I have seen where a lot of companies now are talking about not being open on Thanksgiving and things like that. So that's great. I mean, that, that, that's a good thing. Uh, any of you out there in the chat, are y'all closed on Thanksgiving or do you have to work? I work in groceries, so I'll probably have to work. It's okay. We close early. I don't care. I like what I do. So, um, Hero, you disagree about what? Uh, uh, okay, so Mad Dog, you're closed on Thanksgiving. That's awesome. Hero says, I have friends that still plan out that Friday. You need new friends. <laughs> Just saying. <coughs> Hybrid says, closed on Thanksgiving. That's nice. That's awesome. I mean, hey, look, it, it should be. I mean, that is something that did happen over the, you know, since the pandemic that, that look, there wasn't a lot of good that came from COVID, but that's one of them. A lot of companies started closing on because I think Walmart's closed on Thanksgiving this year. And that's a, that's a big deal, man. I mean, I, I think they should be. If you're a grocery, I understand 110% why grocery stores are not closed on Thanksgiving. I also understand why they close early. But, you know, big mass merchants is one. I, it would be nice to see the Black Friday terminology get erased from the lexicon here shortly. And I think it's going I to I agree be. with that. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It's it's just, it's one, it's like, I don't know, just 
it's it's it, yeah, hopefully it is something that goes. I think it, it's losing its meaning anyway, as you said. It is the month of November, and then they invented Cyber Monday along with it and stuff. But uh, you know, if there is one good spin-off from that COVID thing, is it that so, a lot of people did realize like what they're worth, and companies have to take more seriously now, kind of a work-life balance a little Correct. bit more. Right? But like, I mean, if you look at a company, company, excuse me, a, a country like Germany, for example, it's perfectly normal for every single one of their stores to be closed on a Sunday, every Sunday. That's just normal. It's part of their culture. Well, you know, uh, here that's in, crazy. Here in the South, Irish, for years, we had something called blue laws. And what blue laws were, were on Sundays, businesses couldn't open until noon. All right. All right. And, you know, there were some that took advantage of it and just closed. Um, you know, and but that's the thing. I mean, it would be okay. I, I don't even care if it's not for, you know, if it's not a religious reason or whatnot. Maybe the world would be a better place, especially in the United States, if everything was closed on Sunday. And it yeah, doesn't have to be. I mean, I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, people look at it like, oh, Sunday is religious. Okay, change the day. Everything's closed on Tuesday. You know, one day a week where everything shut down. Yeah, well, Germany is not a particularly religious country, right. you know, uh, it, and it's it's just the, the 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 point being is that it's a day of rest. Generally, like, listen, I I imagine that there's certain things open. I mean, certain things have to be open, but it's just normal. Not you, no one expects a, a grocery store to be open, and it just allows like. You know, a, a little bit of you know uh, respite for for someone uh, that works one of those jobs where it's kind of irregular and all over the place to know that there's a ninety nine percent chance you're going to not have to work on a Sunday. You know, well, here here's what's funny. So I work grocery, and I, and I love it. I mean, I, I I really do enjoy my job. But I also remember working for the same company in high school, right, or right out of high school, and we were closed on Thanksgiving. I remember, I remember going to an ex-girlfriend's house and, you know, I stopped at the grocery store I worked at and stopped in the parking lot and went up and there was a drink machine there and I went and got a you can Dr. Pepper for like a quarter, got my Dr. Pepper and then went to her house. But we were closed. We, we didn't have to work. And, you know, I understand now why they are because the reason grocery stores are open on Thanksgiving because people's planning skills suck balls and they always run out of something or forget something. Yeah, that's exactly it. Like, uh, you, know. you know, if the grocery store said, hey, we're closing on Thanksgiving, by God, they'll make sure they got it. You know, yeah. but, but that's the, yeah. and, and it's brilliant. If you think of it, if, if you really think about it, it's brilliant. The grocery store people know these motherfuckers are going to forget something and we're going to be open for yeah. it. And, you know, and, and I'm not mad about yeah. it. It's it's okay. I mean, it's a grocery store. That's different than, like, Staples being open on Thanksgiving. Why is Staples open on Thanksgiving? You know, or yeah. a grocery store, I get it. You know, and I'm, I'm not mad about it. it. It is what it is. But, you know, it makes sense. Yeah, but then then there's just like ridiculous amounts of great. Like there there's one clothing store in uh, it's based in the UK called Next, and they they have a tradition of uh, of doing kicking off their January sales the day after uh, what you call Boxing Day, we call St Stephen's Day here uh, at five a.m. in the morning. You know, so like they're the only store open uh, in in every town basically, and I, I don't know if they still do it, but I mean. That's just greed. Nobody needs something, uh, you know, an item of clothing for, from a, a high street retailer at 5 a.m. in the morning. Like, you know, oh, fuck no, they don't. You, you know, uh, it, like that's insane. I understand some some of the grocery stuff. But you know what? People need to be people. Like you said, people says uh, their, their skills suck when it comes to organizing. People need to just learn to to be without sometimes, too. And so, like, you know, when someone goes to a grocery store that's closed on, on Thanksgiving or Christmas Day, don't be fucking outraged. It's your fault. You ran out of fucking juice or whatever exactly. the hell it was. Exactly. Exactly. You know, don't go be mad. Fuck off back home, and you know, get get creative. <laughs> you know, whatever. Right. Like we've all. So, like, that's the problem. They're 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 entertaining. This is where the Karens come from. Is because they're being always placated to yes. and always catered for. This this insanity that is that despicable behavior. 
Um, but they cater for that. And yet, who has to be the front line the, you know, of that? Well, <laughs> one episode <laughs> One episode that I'm going to have here very shortly is, um, and it will be within November. I'm, I'm going to have it because it needs to be said. The customers that shop in stores that, that have been shopping there for years and they're too comfortable and they feel like they have stroke there. You know, they feel like they can come in and just talk to whomever and they can move mountains. I've been shopping here for years and they're too comfortable talking to the cashiers or too comfortable talking to the stalkers. And they think like they really are part of this building. No, the fuck you're not. Get the fuck out. Buy your shit. Go. Okay. You, you don't make any difference to anything here at all. But we have people in all these different stores all over the country, they come in because they shop there and they've been shopping there for 10, 15 fucking years and think that they're part of it. They're not. You're not special. You have no stroke. We don't give you shares of what goes on. Buy your shit and get the fuck out. All right? So that is something I'm pretty fired up about Irish. I'm not going to lie because I witnessed it. I've witnessed it everywhere I've ever worked. I witness it now. Yeah. And these people who come in, well, I've been shopping here for 30 years. You should no. I don't care if you've been shopping here for 70, unless your name is on the front of the building. Fuck off. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care what uh, that, you know, uh, how many times I've been told that, Oh, I know the owner. I know the manager. Oh dear. Great. Yeah. Tell him I said, hi. Yeah. Fuck I mean, it's, and, and, and we see it. I mean, we get people come in, you know, and, and they're, some of them are really nice people. They'll find somebody they've talked to before and they'll stop them. And all of a sudden they're telling you your life story or what, you know, what their dog had for dinner last night or some shit. And you're holding people up that are working and the people that you're holding up don't care what you're saying. And, and they're under this illusion that we do. No, we don't go on. We, we, we got shit to do. Well, uh, uh, on this, uh, there's, it doesn't, uh, obviously not in November, but uh, at some point in the next couple of months, uh, there's, 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 Two episodes I'd love to see if we can get on the pod. One, we need to find a shrink, all right? I want to talk to a shrink about what the hell creates a Karen. How, like, how is that, how does that manifest? How does someone psychologically think and act that way where they wouldn't in any other set of circumstance, you know? I'd love to discuss that in the same way you discuss healthcare with a pharmacist and so on, you know? Um, the other one, I'd love to... Uh, uh, if we can get a few people out here who have spouses, like uh, we've discussed before, if we can get a few spouses on who have suffered <laughs> with people who have been addicted to retail for, oh, uh, like myself, that's you another know, one. You know, yeah. Irish, that's kind of like our dream episode because how yeah. long we, we've been talking about that since the beginning of the show. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, for well over a year. Yeah, I mean, and and like I said before, I think we need four spouses. You know, I think four would fill it out just fine. And the way that would look and the way that would work would be like me just kind of asking questions and then letting the spouses talk. And it, it's it can be totally opposite. I mean, it, you know, it can be a male spouse. It can be a female spouse. I don't care. But mm. that is something from a passion standpoint that Irish and I have talked about on and off for the better part of two years well, that yeah. yet to hear spouses who aren't in the business talk about how the business changed their partner. For it's the good fundamental the to this show. I think it, it is. It is. And I know, you know, we, we just need four. I, th I think four will be compelling enough. And to be honest with you, four is probably going to be a two hour show. I agree. And, and, and I'm okay with that. And I'm okay with me just being like, okay, let me ask you this and letting them go. And me just sitting here looking off into oblivion while they talk. I mean, that's fine because I think that's, that's retail science, man. That is, it is. And it's, 
That's what I don't think here. any platform has really that I'm aware of. I don't. I don't know if any platform has allowed spouses to say, "Look, here, here we talk about retail, and we know that it has had mental health effects on some of the people that are, <laughs> frequent the show." What about you, though? Like you, you lived with the people doing eighty-hour weeks, coming home like a gr- grumpy so and so. You know, you, you you lived with someone that oh. just like sold their soul. You know. Oh, I, I will go ahead and say this too because she just threw this out there. We get that episode. Hero will take my place for the episode. All right. And and, and and I think it's fair because Hero's a spouse. She not. She, I'd be fine with that. I would just press buttons, make sure the stream runs, but Hero will run it. And um, so hero plus four. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I know someone I can convince. So that's one. Uh, right. We've talked so, about that. So, I mean, we're looking for and seriously, like, you know, uh, if, if anyone listening to this, uh, we're probably not going to get this done this side of Christmas. So, no, you know, no, no. J- just email or, you know, reach out to Steve, because I think that's probably will be one of the most important episodes from from an insight point of view into how ah. retail affects families i'm sorry know? i gotta laugh hybrid says does she get to wear the hat no she won't be on <laughs> she she won't be on video yeah I'll, I'll have a picture up or something uh we ha- we have agreements here but anyway um i can put a picture of the hat up if need be um but no you're you're right irish and that's something that yeah, maybe spring probably mm-hmm. yeah something like that 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 or i just think uh, the, the shrink might be interesting just to talk about you know how the like how ordinary people that hold down jobs and raise families change fundamentally as soon as they cross the threshold into a store and become a completely different person. I agree. How does that happen? I agree. I I, I I'm not trying to even be funny. I, I really don't understand it. <laughs> it's like, I, it's, it's you know, that. I mean, that's I don't know. You, they do all sorts of studies for all sorts of shit. There is no fucking Karen story a study. Excuse me. There should be. No, I mean, or whatever. I mean, Karen I mean, is kind be. of whatever, whatever you want to call that in a medical term. Like, but just, just, just someone who can just flip. Like, who, who in every other situation, it's got to be, be some fine. sort of personality you know? disorder. If you think about it, it has to be. I don't know if they, they, they just feel superior, or, or I think, I think we discussed before. I really do think it's because retail over the last thirty years has basically said that you know we'll allow any sort of behavior and serve you anyway and it's just it's just these psychopaths in society that just know that they can come I, in here and kick the shit out of teenagers for fun okay and get away with it i i've just coined it it's a retail personality disorder yeah all right cool i mean like, rpd uh, yeah rpd like whatever but I, I i legitimately would love to now surely enough people out there you don't have to be a certified shrink with like you know you know uh, a business like you know lots of people have studied psychology that might have insight into this i don't i legitimately don't understand it but i am interested into how the hell that happens you know i I agree it would be nice to hear like a professional tell us why they act that way that'd be kind of cool well yeah because it's environmental because i mean like i've seen karens do shit in stores that they would never do in a school. They would never do in a in, in a lot of other environments. They definitely would do in restaurants, mind. So it's pretty much where they get served and they get to click their fingers and bark orders at someone and and return items uh, with out of just deliberately out of uh, warranty just to have a little win for themselves. I don't know what it is. I once compared it to kleptomania, but I think that's about as close as I can understand it. I just think they do it for kicks. Um, but kleptomania at least is a recognized condition. What the fuck is a Karen? I'd like to know that. Right. Um, so what did I say? What, retail, what was it? Retail Something personality like, disorder. Yeah. So uh, if, if, someone, one, I guess if anyone tank. knows a shrink, that'll come on. That'll be great. I don't. <laughs> but, you know, if anyone knows one, that'd be great. Yeah. So, all right. So we're sitting in an hour. Yeah, an hour one. So, what's everybody? Th- Does everybody think everything looks good? Is everything working okay? Did anybody have any problems? Just curious. Leave leave in the chat or whatnot. Uh, Blame Tyke says I'll have to find the name of the phenomenon. Is where having money makes you disconnect with seeing people as people might be connected. Yep, that that makes sense too. Yep. Blame tag. I love how you have this love affair with this dude about self checkouts. That's really fucked up. But anyway, so 
Uh, hybrid says looks good. All right, so everything worked okay. So it's cool. So Friday, something I did, I did not mention tonight. What I'm doing, um, going forward, I didn't do one for tonight because this was kind of throw together, just kind of hang out. Let's get everything worked back out. Um, every week, depending on what the the topic is, I will post a question for the week and it will be in relation to the topic that we're going to discuss in the last 10 minutes of each show going forward will be the question of the week and then i will kind of pick and be like okay this was the best answer and then we'll kind of go over it so that's something like that. a little bit different that i've i've never done before um i do have ready for friday you know the question that i had asked and i already know who i'm going to pick um, but it's subjective. You know, if you get upset because you weren't picked, look, I mean, I'm not giving away awards here or anything, but it's, it's just the one that sticks with me or whatnot. The one that seems the most thought out or the most intriguing or whatnot. It's not a competition, you know, and I'll be asking these questions every week going forward. Um, I do have somebody that has reached out to me that I'll be scheduling here very soon. Hopefully, that is a really big deal and um, with a really big company um, that could be really, really cool. And I've had some other people reach out to me as well, so we've got some stuff going on, so it is what it is. But for today, it's awesome that we got all this stuff worked out. It's awesome that everything looks good. It's awesome that everything works. Nobody hasn't had any drops once again. Yeah, please subscribe. There is a little thing, and please hit the notification bell. Boom, whatnot. So I'm glad everything worked out tonight because, uh, I mean, God, it's actually been a little bit over a month. So I had to fire everything back up and make everything, you know, was working correctly. But tomorrow, Friday night, we're going to go in. Friday night's going to be ugly. Friday night's going to be um, a lot of piss and vinegar and a lot of anger as it should be so everyone if you have not congratulated blame tag for the year anniversary of the serving times please do so and having said that everyone have a great evening before i sign off here iris you got anything to say i'll see you guys in the chat on friday yes sir iris go get you some sleep i know it's been a long couple of days <laughs> i will all right everybody have a great night and we'll see you next time <laughs>